<laughs> Hello, guys. Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November from Survival Tech Nord. Today we have a very exciting video for those of you interested and waiting for the build video for the Ultra Pack. So today we're going to go through the final parts list or almost final parts list. We're going to show you how we've simplified the design, made it a lot cheaper, and uh, well, we're going to put together the battery tray and wiring. So stick with me. <laughs> and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. So a lot's been going on since I updated the web page or made the last video. And I'm happy to tell you that we actually have a working 4S1P Ultra Pack. So what you're looking at now are two different tests that we've done with the Ultra Pack and the FT817. On the left, you see the Ultra Pack with the FT817 running PSK63 and 31, doing a field test from the patio using the Ultra Pack to power the radio. Now on the right side, this is much more interesting because this gives us an idea about how things are going to work in the field or how long they're going to work. And we actually did a whisper runtime test. Uh, I believe it was uh, set up to beacon out every six minutes for one minute. Yeah. And it lasted four hours, 52 minutes. And the starting voltage was 16.4, uh, something like that. So not actually bad at all, with no problems whatsoever. If you've been paying attention so far, you'll notice that there are a few new components that weren't there the last time around. Probably the first thing you'll notice that's missing is the Druk linear voltage regulator. I decided to replace that with a switching voltage regulator or UBEC that are commonly used in the RC aircraft and quadcopters, things like that. The idea was to have a higher efficiency voltage regulator that isn't just wasting energy as heat. This should translate into higher run times from our battery packs. The downside is the noise coming from the switching voltage regulator. In my testing, I can tell you that one toroid was enough to alleviate the noise, but I do a lot of weak signal work with the FT817 and I wanted to be certain that noise wouldn't be an issue, so we have three toroids instead. So let's go ahead and break down the components, then get started with the build. Very first thing on the list are the battery trays. Next up we have the battery management system, or BMS. One thing to point out about the BMS, guys, that people haven't understood you don't have to use this specific BMS, you only have to find a BMS with the same specifications. Next up we have the UBEC or switching voltage regulator. The UBEC along with the BMS really set off this project. The combination of these two components allows us to balance charge our pack in the field and give the right voltage to our radio. Next up, we have the momentary switch that we use to initialize the battery management system when we first put batteries into the pack. Next up, you'll need your Anderson power poles or whatever connectors you're going to use. You'll need your toroids to filter the output of the switching voltage regulator. And finally, because each build is unique, remember to get these switches and voltage meters, amp meters, things like that, that you are going to use for your own build. So let's go ahead and build the tray and do the wiring. The first step in building the tray is deciding its orientation. The two simplest options are side by side or front to back. Whichever one you choose, the end result is exactly the same. Let's take a look at two different examples. 
As far as I can tell, there really are no disadvantages for either design. The point is to simply come to the one which is best for you. So that's enough about that. Let's move on to soldering the tray together. First things first, mock up the tray halves and decide which way you're going to solder them. Then clean up all the contact surfaces. And finally, apply your flux. Now, I actually ran out of flux when I was making this video, so I'm doing this the old-fashioned way. Still, tinning your contact surfaces before you get started with the actual build makes everything much easier to do. By the way, having a temperature control iron, which is powerful enough to heat up these contact surfaces quickly, will make this project build much simpler. All right, we'll do this one and then flip it over and do the other side. Now we're to connect the tray halves. The horizontal bars in the image show you where we're actually going to connect the trays together. For my build, I'm using stainless steel tape. It's the type used in making battery packs which you solder together. And just like in the diagram, there are three connection points. And what I've done is measured my steel tape and laid it across the contact points on the battery tray. I tinned the steel tape as well to make it easier to adhere to the contact points. Again, a powerful iron is really helpful in these steps. And look, as you can see, I'm no guru at this. But it's easy enough that anybody can do it and get it done correctly. Don't care too much about what it looks like now. You can always go back and clean it up later. The most important point is ensuring the bonding between the two tech surfaces. Now we've made the 4S series tray. Anyway, now you can see it, it really wasn't that difficult. So we have a 1P tray. We'll cover a 2P tray in a follow-up build video. All right, now we're gonna add some wires to the battery tray. This is what you want it to look like when it's done. There's five wires coming off the back. You've got your plus and minus, plus three balance wires. Stop the video right here, guys, and take a screenshot. You'll see on the battery tray there are labels B+, B3, B2, B1, and B-. On the right side image, the BMS also has corresponding labels. I've done this so you don't get confused about where to attach the cables or wires from the tray that go to the BMS. Prepare your wires for the battery pack first. Then attach them to the battery pack. Don't worry about the BMS at this point. You can attach them in any order you want to, but I've started with battery plus, the red, and battery minus, the black. Next, I tin the center of B2 so that I can get good adhesion with the wire when I attach it.
Then I do exactly the same thing with B3 and B1. If it's not clear to you yet, your yellow wires are your balance wires, while your red and black are your plus and minus. Now the only thing left to do is connect your wires from your battery tray to the corresponding labels on the BMS. In part two of the build video, we'll cover the charge and discharge side of the BMS. For those of you who want to skip ahead, this is the diagram that I've used to document the connections of the Ultra Pack as it exists today, and it's not going to change. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to like us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, support us on Patreon, find us on Pinterest, Google+, and of course survivaltechnology.net where we share lots of news, information, and articles from our channel buddies. Finally, if you've enjoyed this video and you think I deserve it, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who might enjoy it. Alright guys, rock and roll. Thanks for watching. Ciao.